David Lynch's films have always had an ambiguous state of unreality, where it's never made certain what is real and what's just an unannounced dream sequence. The reality is, film itself induces a dream state in the viewer, where what is real and what isn't real is used to manipulate the audience to think or feel a certain way. Lynch is well aware of the dream state of storytelling, and instead of trying as hard as he can to mask this, he instead brings it to the forefront. He makes us very aware that we are watching what is essentially an extended illusion. Eraserhead, David Lynch's first feature film, laid the foundation for this style of dream narrative very early on, and I'm not entirely certain that Lynch ever intended the film to have a clear-cut, real and non-real double narrative. I think of the film as a stream-of-consciousness film, in a sense, where reality is only very lightly touched upon, and most of what happens is just symbolic of a narrative that we never fully see, but is heavily implied. The first scene of the film is symbolic of the act of conception. Henry is stuck out in space with the planet behind him. The planet is most likely a symbol for Henry's mind, as is demonstrated by the first shot of the film which shows the planet in the same place as his head, and the fact that it does vaguely resemble a brain. Next we see a house on the planet with a hole in the top, and inside we see the man in the planet who controls levers and stares out of a window. This man basically seems to be the engineer running Henry. He is not in complete control of everything Henry does, but he's the thing keeping everything afloat. In a sense, he's Henry's conscious or moral compass. A sperm comes out of Henry's mouth, and the man in the planet pulls his levers, which causes the sperm to fall into a puddle. This puddle is a symbol of the egg or even the womb, making this the act of conception. We will soon learn that Henry's girlfriend Mary becomes pregnant and gives birth to Henry's child, confirming this beginning scene as symbolic of the act of sex. The last shot of the scene has the camera exiting out through a tunnel, which to me seems symbolic of the act of birth, us seeing the point of view of the child leaving the womb through the birth canal. The very next thing we see, fittingly, is Henry Spencer, our main character. Eraserhead started David Lynch's long-recurring theme of sex and technology and how these things affect the individual. And one of the core themes of Eraserhead in particular is the father-son theme, that the father and the son are one and the same. So the birth of the son leading to an image of the father is the first of many indications that Henry and his child are the same person thematically. Henry walks through town to get to his home, and of note is a shot where he steps in a puddle. Earlier, a puddle represented the egg slash womb. So while it could be coincidental, there's a possibility that this shot is actually continuing the theme. He accidentally stepped in the puddle and ruined his sock and shoe. Similarly, we learn that his child is an accident as well, that he never meant to have a kid, so he ruined his life. The technology theme shows in these opening scenes, with the scenery being unwelcoming to say the least, portraying a technology as overwhelmingly present in Henry's life. Sex and technology getting in the way of happiness is one of the ultimate themes of Eraserhead, and it manifests itself heavily in the film's environments. Another shot in the scene is a close-up of a puddle that is dirty and full of trash. This could be a subtle implication that the womb of Henry's girlfriend is also destroyed in a sense by Henry's presence and the birth of the child. Henry comes into his apartment and checks his mailbox. The mailbox, in a sense, represents Henry's sexual desires, as is evidenced by later scenes in the film. Here he checks it passingly, as if to say that he's not really looking for anything at the moment. The technology theme reprises with Henry waiting for the elevator door to close. The shot portrays him as almost helpless and surrounded by various human constructions. Technology has a very ominous and controlling presence, and the amount of time it takes for the elevator to close is uncomfortable. The film is not making any grand sweeping statements in regards to technology, apart from the fact that it is a detriment to happiness in both small and big ways. Henry has a run-in with his neighbor, who seems to be attracted to Henry, which becomes more obvious later on in the film. When he enters his apartment, the very first sound we hear is the rather loud radiator, again part of the technology theme. Two props that we see in his apartment are very important. First is a picture on his wall of an atomic bomb's mushroom cloud. This could possibly be a similar idea to Dr. Strangelove, which used bombs as a sex metaphor, making the mushroom cloud a phallic symbol of sorts in both that film and in this one, and thus tying the sex and technology themes together, which in the case of Eraserhead would be implying that sex is destructive, as well as foreshadowing the eventual explosion of the planet at the end of the film. Beneath this is a dead tree, which could be a symbol of impotence, and also of just the loss of liveliness that Henry is likely experiencing as a result of his cramped lifestyle soon to be invaded upon by the addition of a child that he has to take care of. The weird vegetation that exists all around Henry's house may also be the result of the loss of liveliness theme. 
At one point, Henry looks out of his window, and all we see are bricks. Another point about technology, in this case that his apartment is so close to the next building over that he has no view. Even the simplest of joys in life is ruined by the presence of technology. Henry walks to Mary's house, and outside of her house are some plants, and a nearby vent of some sort is blowing steam onto them. All of the plants appear to be dying. First off, this is a recurrence of the technology theme, the idea being that technology is having a negative impact on the life of these plants. And since the plant in Henry's room appears to represent Henry himself, these plants may very well represent Mary and her family, the suggestion being that Mary's family is physically or emotionally or even psychologically unhealthy, just as Henry is. When Henry walks into Mary's house, there is a mother dog feeding her pups. This foreshadows the eventual reveal of their child and sets the uncomfortable tone for the sex and parenthood themes of the film. Mary's mother asks Henry, What do you do? Oh, oh I'm on vacation. What did you do? At which point Mary starts having some strange kind of episode. The phrase, what did you do, could take a double meaning here, because what Henry did was get Mary pregnant, thus the episode that Mary has occurring right after the line. Mary's dad, Bill, comes in and introduces himself. Bill gradually becomes angry when he talks about how he built every pipe in town, and at that moment, a train comes by and makes it difficult to hear him, another example of the technology theme. The pipes also relate to the dream sequence at the beginning of the film, in which the egg, Mary, that Henry inseminates is a puddle. Later we see a puddle outside of Henry's apartment that is made by a pipe that leads to nowhere but the puddle. Bill built every pipe, and since the pipes lead to the puddles, it could be a possibility that it's suggesting that he created Mary and isn't too happy about it either, as if all of his effort of having and raising a kid wasn't worth it. We see Mary's grandma in the other room, and the notable absence of a grandpa figure might be implying something, a generational theme of family troubles. Perhaps the grandfather abandoned her, or perhaps he died, but she appears to have given up on life, and it seems to me to be suggesting generations of fathers being failures to the children and their wives. Henry is asked to carve up the chickens, and as soon as he sticks the fork into the first chicken, it starts bleeding from the hole between its legs. This is a tie-in between the sex and technology themes, and this could represent a lot of things. The position of the chicken's legs could imply childbirth, and the blood would thus mean that the child is going to die. The two-pronged fork also foreshadows Henry's eventual usage of scissors to kill his child. It also could represent Henry's fear of childbirth, fear of failing to father a child, and fear of female anatomy. In the same scene, another foreshadow occurs when a lamp gradually brightens up and then fades out. Mary's mother informs Henry that there is a premature baby and then kisses Henry, which makes him very uncomfortable, and his nose starts bleeding, most likely from stress. Bill says, This dinner is getting mighty cold. Which carries more than one meaning. It implies that the food is getting cold, that the family gathering has taken a turn for the worse, and since the food itself is suggestive of Henry and Mary, it's foreshadowing that their lives are going to be taking a turn for the worse too. The film fast forwards to the couple living together in Henry's apartment with the new baby, which looks inhuman to say the least. More than likely, this baby is at least a vague phallic symbol, and throughout the course of the film will also come to represent Henry himself. We see Henry go to his mailbox, which I already said was a representation of his sexual desires, and here he finds a little box with a thing inside of it that I prefer to call the seed. Right before he enters the apartment, he puts away the seed, and when Mary asks him if there was any mail, he says no. If we run with the idea that it represents his sexual desire, then this implies that Henry is going to have an affair, which we will see later. In another usage of the technology theme, Henry stares at the radiator, and he sees a light go on inside of it. Inside of the radiator is a theater. My best guess is that the theater represents the part of Henry's mind that contains his fantasies. His child's crying thrusts Henry back into reality as the sound of the radiator is overtaken by the sound of his child crying. This idea will be repeated later on in a different way. After Mary leaves in anger at the child as well as Henry, the child becomes sick. This is both foreshadowing and symbolism. Since the son represents the father, the child being sick means that Henry is sick in some way too. Henry is sick because of his thoughts of infidelity, or perhaps even just because of Mary's absence. Henry stashes away the seed of adultery, and at some point he goes to check on it, and there's a shot of the mailbox. He tries to leave the room, but his child keeps crying and Henry is forced to stay. Possibly the child is aware that Henry is leaving to have an affair, but even if this isn't the case, this still shows that the child is getting in the way of Henry doing what he wants to do, which is rather selfish and mean to begin with. 
There are at least two shots of Henry laying down on his bed where I believe he's supposed to resemble the child in some way, as they both lay face up, doing nothing. We see shots of the child's eyes staring at Henry, as if the child is watching Henry and making sure Henry does nothing wrong. We finally enter this land in the radiator. We meet the lady in the radiator. This is the first time we see genuine happiness in a character. This woman will come to represent Henry's ultimate fantasy, his dream girl, so to speak. She's beautiful, by dream logic. She's happy. She can dance and sing. She can destroy sperm and thus not get pregnant. Bottom line, this is Henry's fantasy, whereas Mary is Henry's reality. We return to what we assume is reality, but ever since we entered the radiator, reality is a series of weird symbolic events that represent actual events in Henry's story, but are portrayed in dream logic ways. We begin with Henry sleepless in bed with Mary who is tossing and turning, doing annoying things in her sleep like rubbing her eyes and chattering her teeth. Henry tries to get her to move over and then finds sperm in his bed sheets. This means that the radiator theater scene was a wet dream. In a very odd sequence, we see the seed of adultery come alive. It climbs onto the surface of the planet, which if you'll remember is supposed to be Henry's mind. The seed of adultery wraps around through Henry's mind over and over again, getting bigger and bigger, until it opens and we enter it. This is a metaphor for Henry's affair that will take place very soon. When the affair is actually seen, it's much different than one would expect. They are sitting vertically in a puddle of fluid in the bed. The fluid appears to be white, which could mean it's semen. But without getting too gross about metaphors, I think it's supposed to be a metaphor for the growing sexual hole in Henry's bed life, being filled with the puddle of this new woman. Henry has essentially left Mary, and this puddle is supposed to represent Henry's neighbor. Remember that previously a puddle represented Mary, particularly the egg where the sperm landed. The two enter the puddle until all that is seen left is her hair. We then see Henry's neighbor who encounters the planet, which represents Henry's mind. So in a sense, she is disturbed by Henry's mind in some way. She sees the ugly nature of Henry. But this is all brought about because of her seeing his son. Soon, the planet will come to represent the father and the son, and the son will take place of the father by the end. The lady in the radiator returns to sing, In heaven everything is fine. The lyrics to this song imply that Henry feels that bliss because of the affair, and his fantasy woman comes to make him feel alright. This fantasy woman is not Henry's neighbor, but for this small moment, Henry feels happy because of her, while he thinks about his dream woman, the lady in the radiator. Henry finally gets to be with the lady in the radiator, who gives him a bright light with white noise, which then goes out. This is a repetition of the lamp going out during the dinner scene. The lady in the radiator has given some sort of gift and then left him. This is supposed to represent the affair, a temporary moment of bliss that leaves quickly. Then the horror starts. The man in the planet reappears. I said earlier that the man in the planet is the engineer of his mind running him. In this case, it appears that he is angry with Henry for what he's done, as he kind of functions as Henry's conscience. The tree of death comes out. I said earlier that this tree was supposed to represent a loss of liveliness in the body or mind. Henry's mental state is going to temporarily kill him in this next scene. Henry hides in the corner, rubbing the frame nervously. Henry then has a penis-like object decapitate him. The head is then thrown out onto the main stage floor. Just like the chicken in the dinner scene, the tree's base starts bleeding uncontrollably, filling a puddle of blood on the room. The puddle represented the egg, and now the puddle of blood represents the mutilated egg, in essence the murder of a child since conception. Henry's son takes place where his head once was, and starts crying louder and louder until it's echoing, a repetition of the earlier scene where Henry stares at the radiator. There the son's crying overtook the sound of the radiator, and here the lady in the radiator had this loud noise which here is being replaced by the loud noise of his child, a dreamlike repetition of the reality from before. The puddle of blood is the conception murder of his child, his head being the place of the child because he is his son, and his son is in his place because his son is him. This means that since Henry created this abomination of a child, he has murdered two, his child and himself. This dream has turned very much into a nightmare. This scene also represents the murder of his fantasy, as if his child has destroyed all hopes of Henry ever achieving happiness. Henry's head is consumed by the blood. We return to the real world, although I put that term loosely because it definitely isn't. Henry's head lands upside down, and his hair and scalp comes off. A child picks up his head, with the brain showing, and runs off with it. He takes it to a shop where they drill a piece of his brain out, put it into a machine, and it creates erasers for pencils. This is both the most misplaced scene in the entire film, and the most important scene in the entire film. This is where the meaning of eraser head is finally revealed. 
David Lynch has said that nobody has ever told him a meaning for Eraserhead that is correct. One theory of mine is that you're supposed to erase your head and come into the film without expectations. In that sense, Eraserhead takes on that name because its purpose is to clear your mind, to make you think differently, just as 2001 did. However, there are other theme-based ideas going into it. Another theory of mine is that the name Eraserhead applies to Henry, not because of his odd hairdo, but because of his head, meaning his penis, and his mind. His mind gets gradually erased throughout the film. Just as a writing on a paper gets harder and harder to read as you erase it, his mind gets harder and harder to maintain as it gets erased. His head also erases others too, as he gradually erases everybody out of his life until it is just him and his fantasy. He also erases intimacy and love by being with others. His mind gradually grinds down due to technology and sex and relationships. I don't expect David Lynch to ever see this, and I particularly don't expect him to say it's right, and there's a simple reason. The name was the absolute first thing he came up with. That's not to say that the name is meaningless, but to say that Eraserhead is a blanket term for everything in the film, so it's very difficult to figure out the origin of the phrase in his mind. Now we finally return to the closest notion to a real world that this film has. Henry knocks on room 27 looking for the woman, but she is not home. The child seems to laugh at him afterwards. Before, the child cried if Henry tried to leave. The child is almost trying to make Henry feel bad for trying to have an affair, first by making Henry feel guilty, then by making Henry feel embarrassed. Henry lays down again, which connects the visual of Henry and the son being one and the same, by no coincidence a parallel of the first time Henry tried to have an affair. The only reason Henry was able to have an affair at all was because the woman approached him. Henry is locked in the same position as his son after his son dooms him to fail. Henry hears activity in the hallway. He opens his door to find his neighbor with another man, and it's obvious that the two are about to have sex in her apartment. The man is creepy to say the least, and Henry is horrified. The woman sees Henry, and for a short shot, Henry's head is replaced with his son's head. This is an obvious metaphor to suggest that Henry and the son are one and the same, as well as meaning that the woman can't look at Henry without thinking of his abomination of a child. Henry looks concerned as he sits at the door of his room. He looks at the irradiator and then at his son. Henry is clearly angry. In both the most depressing and most disturbing scene of the film, he cuts open the son's bandages, clearly with intent to kill. The son only has two obvious organs, which makes me believe that he is supposed to resemble a penis with the organs resembling testicles. Henry stabs him in one of the organs, which oozes a white fluid, then blood. Henry backs into the corner of the room, his son becoming more and more extreme in nature. First his neck extends out to the wall, then his head becomes gigantic, floating and teleporting from one spot to the next, as the lamp flickers simultaneously with each of the son's movements. The lamp gets extremely bright and then burns out. This is a repetition of the dinner scene, and the lady in the radiator scene, and this will be repeated once more very soon. Henry is stuck in the corner of the room with his child's head staring at him. This is just like the scene in the radiator where he is trapped in the corner as scary things happen. Suddenly, the head is replaced with the planet. The son and the father are one and the same, and the son has come to replace the father. The planet explodes out, and Henry is surrounded by the racer shavings of his own brain. We enter the now fractured planet and see the man in the planet who is trying desperately to push the lever back into the position. Before, the lever caused sex. Now that the adventure is nearly over, he can't put the brakes on Henry anymore. Henry is essentially unable to be stopped by his conscience. But more importantly, the man in the planet represents the mechanics of Henry's body and mind. He can't put the brakes on Henry's body or mind. We see one final scene bathed in white light, where the lady in the radiator comes to embrace Henry, who now looks relieved. And then it's over. Okay, so if you're wondering what the final sequence meant, he kills his son. His mental state deteriorates as he can't cope with what he's done. He learns that the son is truly the father and he has really killed himself. His mind fractures and he's deteriorating. He finally burns out at the end just like the lamp. His mind has been erased. He has died. In conclusion, Eraserhead tells the story of a man who had sex with a woman out of wedlock that he didn't really love. We learn that the woman's family is the victim of technology and relationship failures, and Henry and Mary are doomed to be next. Henry eventually decides to have an affair, but his premature child gets in the way. His wife leaves him, and he finally does have an affair. His mental health is slowly destroyed. His son again gets in the way of his attempt at a second affair, and he realizes that the woman he wants is an illusion, and the woman he tries to get can't love him because of his failure of a child. He resolves to kill his child, but in the process he loses his mind, with a great possibility 
possibility that he dies, to the embrace of his own insanity. The term Eraserhead probably has something to do with the effect that Henry has on everybody's lives, including his own, and how he slowly erases people's happiness. The major themes are technology's subtle dominance of human existence and sex's overt dominance of human existence.